Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the comms prepper with a video about satellite communications. Uh, many of us own dual band handheld radios or walkie talkies. Uh, a popular radio in the prepping community is the Waxen or Ocean, depending on how you pronounce it, dual band radio, which allows you to communicate on VHF and UHF frequencies. And many of us use these types of radios for local networks or using amateur radio repeaters. But you can also use these radios for space communications. Uh, to talk to amateur radio satellites that are up in orbit. Currently there are two satellites in orbit that are FM repeaters. Uh, the satellite pictured on the left is AO27 launched by the United States and the satellite on the right is SO50 launched by Saudi Arabia and these two satellites are FM repeaters in space. They listen on a VHF frequency and then they transmit on a UHF frequency, which is why you need a dual band handheld radio or mobile radio to work these satellites. Because they're in orbit, about 690 kilometers up and moving at about 7 kilometers per second, you'd have a pretty difficult time communicating with these satellites uh, with the stock rubber antenna that came from the factory. So many people who work these satellites have this antenna here. This is one of the more popular ones called the Arrow 2 satellite antenna, and it's $139. And this antenna is specifically designed for working with the amateur radio satellites. The VHF elements, uh, as I've covered in other videos, frequency equals wavelength, and wavelength requires a specific length of antenna. The longer elements here are cut and pre-tuned for the VHF operating frequency of these satellites. So there's no adjustments you need to make, you just put it together. And then the shorter elements are pre-tuned and adjusted for the UHF receive frequencies coming down from the satellite that you would hear in your radio. And of course you need a handheld radio and there's a BNC connector. So this is all the equipment you need to communicate with these two amateur radio satellites that are in orbit. You're going to need the frequencies and here's a frequency chart that I downloaded from work-sat.com and I'll put a link down below. And they give you the programming frequencies for SO50 and AO27. Uh, now you'll notice here there's multiple channels for each satellite. This is because you'll need to have more than one channel for each satellite to compensate for what they call the Doppler effect. As the satellite comes up on the horizon and you're pointing the antenna at it, it's going to move past you and come over you and go behind you. And you're going to turn around and follow it down until it disappears over the horizon. Well, as this pass is taking place, there's a frequency shift happening because the satellite's in motion, and this is called the Doppler effect. So if you look on this slide here, you'll notice the transmit frequency from your handheld is constant, but the receive frequency starts high and gets progressively lower as the satellite's moving towards you and then passes over your head and disappears over the horizon. This is a, there's a lot of formulas for Doppler effect. Here's a chart I got from NASA, but essentially when the satellite enters the picture, picture you in the middle, between the satellites it's moving towards you, it's compressing the frequencies, making those frequencies higher. When the satellite passes overhead and it's moving away from you, it's pulling those frequencies apart and it's lowering the frequency. So that's why we have different receive frequencies program for each satellite. Here's another chart. Uh, I can remember this from school for the Doppler effect. The train's coming at you, blowing the whistle. The frequency gets higher. When the train passes, the frequency gets lower. The frequency of the whistle actually hasn't changed. It's the motion of the train that's compressing that frequency. So here's a little chart I made with PowerPoint, and it shows the satellite coming in on the left, and the handheld radio set for 436.805. So as the satellite's progressing overhead, the frequency receive frequency needs to be changed. So you're changing the channel on the radio as the satellite's passing overhead. And when it's above you, and then when it gets past you, again, the frequency continues to get lower until it gets to the end of its orbit or pass, and it's going to disappear over the horizon, and you will no longer have communications. And typically, this whole pass takes anywhere from 8 to 14 minutes, depending on how close the satellite's passing your position. So now that you understand the basic mechanics of how we talk to these satellites and the equipment that you need, because they're moving, you need to know where they're coming. So there's many applications and programs and websites out there dedicated to tracking amateur radio satellites. 
Now here's a screenshot from my iPad for a pass that I tried to access tonight for this video that is tracking SO50. My position's in the center. You can see the little sky blue dot. Again, I'm working overseas right now, so that's Moscow. And you have the satellite details up above, and what it's saying is uh, time to AOS or acquisition of satellite. I have about an hour and 34 minutes, you know, when I was making this video until the satellite showed up. And then I probably had about 14 minutes to communicate with it. In the top right hand corner, you see a satellite overflight plot, and you can actually expand this out. And this is something you can hold uh, on an iPad or an iPhone, and this gives you an idea when you're standing outside where the satellite's going to show up on the horizon and how close it's going to get to you in in elevation you raise that antenna up if you hold it straight up and down it's 90 degrees you come down to a 45 degree angle then zero on the horizon so basically this is showing the satellite coming in uh, coming in from the west that's the sky blue piece as it's approaching me it's probably going to peak at about 45 to 50 degrees in elevation when I'm holding the antenna and then it's going to start to get lower and disappear in the north northeast and disappear over the horizon. Uh, here's another application I have for my iPad and this actually works with the compass in the iPad so I can lay this down and this gives me a little more information uh, and it'll actually with the little black box show the position of the satellite. So on this screenshot it was showing the satellite coming in at 21 minutes past the hour coming in from the south arcing uh, probably at about 79 degrees at its highest elevation and then starting to drop in elevation as it disappeared uh, northeast over the horizon that way at 2157 past the hour. Another way you can track these satellites is my website and this is a website here amsat.org and again I'll put a link below and this is showing a pass for the Saudi satellite that's going to happen here in Russia at uh, 442 in the morning. Uh, the website shows this in GMT time, which is London time. I'm four hours ahead of it. So the application in the lower left hand corner is saying four o'clock, 428 in the morning. And how this correlates uh, between the website and the application. Uh, what this is saying is at 28 minutes past the hour, the satellite's going to show up on the horizon. My pass is going to last for 13 minutes and 59 seconds. When the satellite does show up, it's going to be at 310 degrees on the horizon. When the satellite leaves or, or I have I lose access to it, it's going to disappear over the horizon at 138 degrees. And the peak elevation when I have to raise the antenna with my hand is going to be at 79 degrees during this pass. So these are the tools you can use to track the satellite. So right now it's going to cut over to a video that I tried to make tonight with one of the satellite passes. Uh, I couldn't hold the camera and talk in the handheld radio and then I, I dropped the part. So it's a real short video that uh, you can at least hear a satellite pass coming overhead. So you can actually hear it in my handheld radio. And I'm going to put links down below because there's really good YouTube videos out there and actually guys showing you how to find the satellite they're holding their antenna they're tracking it and they're communicating on it I'll try to do another video later when I get a good pass during the day so hold on a second this will cut over into that video and you can actually hear an amateur radio satellite passing over my house with my handheld radio holding that arrow 2 satellite antenna and as always thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel and now we'll cut over to that video